I'd like to announce the return date for myself, the notorious Conor McGregor, for the greatest comeback of all time. It will take place in Las Vegas for International Fight Week on June the 29th. Come a little closer. And the opponent, Michael Chandler. When Conor McGregor fights, you're witnessing something that comes along once in a lifetime. Big news out of the UFC. Conor McGregor will not fight at UFC 303 in two weeks. That comeback is now delayed after Dana White announced McGregor's exit from UFC 303 due to injury. UFC 303 got a lot of additions last night, one being Alex Pereira taking on Yuri Prohaska for the second time. From what was supposed to be the return of the notorious Conor McGregor, we were fed with bombshell news that shook the MMA world. In a matter of hours, we were told that Hamzad Chemaev, Jamal Hill, and Conor McGregor were all forced to pull out of their fights due to injuries. This is no problem for Dana White in the UFC, however, as they've been through this many times before. They pulled together a title match in two weeks' notice. So now instead of seeing McGregor back in action in more than three years at UFC 303, we get the light heavyweight champ Alex Pajeda facing off against former light heavyweight champ Yuri Prohaska in a rematch for the undisputed UFC light heavyweight belt. For the co-main event that was supposed to be Jamal Hill against Khalil Roundtree, we now have perennial title challenger Brian Ortega going against upcoming prospect Diego Lopez in the co-main event. And to start off the main card, we got Ian Machado Gary going off against Michael Venom Page. We got an exciting couple fights to look at this coming weekend, so here in this video, I'll look at the main fights on the main card, evaluate each fighter, and see who comes out on top this weekend in Las Vegas. The first fight I want to look at is the number 7 ranked welterweight Ian Machado Gary going against number 14 Michael Venom Page. Gary is primarily a striker, using his length to keep opponents at bay. He does a good job at utilizing his kicks to prevent fighters from moving forward and pressuring him. What Gary also does very well is his awareness around the cage, knowing where he is at all times. But even though his striking is very well, his grappling isn't as good, looking very mediocre on the ground. But that's not going to matter, as he's going against fellow striker Michael Venom Page. How would I describe Page's fight style? Very unorthodox, and I mean very unorthodox. He stands in this weird, jumpy, sideways position and hits his opponents from these weird angles that don't make sense to anybody. He keeps his hands all the way near his waist, so his head is completely exposed but his opponents whiff at every time they go head hunting. I don't understand his fight style, but I do understand Paige's entertainment style, so this fight's going to be fun to see. As for how this fight plays out, he and Gary's going to try to snipe MVP, while Paige will try and bait Gary into throwing something reckless and catch him on the way in. I think Gary has no problem staying at bay, but he'll get impatient trying to figure out Paige and his jumpy style. I got Paige derailing the Gary hype train and winning this fight by decision. The next fight I'm going to take a look at is number 14 ranked featherweight Diego Lopez going against number 3 Ryan T City Ortega. Diego Lopez has been on a superstar's rise ever since he fought on 5 days notice against one of the toughest guys in the featherweight division, Mozart Evloev. Lopez put up a great fight against Evloev even though he lost, and the UFC has been rewarding to him. His next 3 fights in the UFC were all finishes in the first round, including a knockout win against Sadiq Yusuf at UFC 300. What Lopez does so well is his pressure and striking, putting it on his opponents as soon as the bell rings. He showed that against everybody he faced in the UFC, not letting them breathe. What he also does well is his grappling, showing he can hold his own on the ground. In his fight against Movzar, he attempted 4 submissions, including a leg lock, straight arm Kimura, triangle choke, and an arm bar. Diego Lopez is a lot of fun to watch, but he's going against the former title challenger, Brian Ortega. Ortega has been one of the best featherweights for the past couple years now. After finishing Yair Rodriguez by submission in his last fight, he's looking for a third title shot after winning this fight against Lopez. Ortega is one of the best grapplers in the UFC, winning half of his fights by submission. His striking is questionable, as seen against great strikers like Max Holloway and Yair Rodriguez, so he'll look to take this fight to the ground as soon as possible. How this fight plays out, Lopez will put that pressure on Ortega, but unless Lopez can finish him on the feet, I see this fight playing out exactly like Lopez vs Evloev. Lopez has good moments, but gets dominated by takedowns and control time. I got Ortega by decision. Now we come to the main event, where we see a title rematch that happened only 7 months ago. 
The light heavyweight champ Alex Bejeda is fighting the guy he won the belt from in the first place, former champion Yuri Prohaska. Starting with the challenger, Prohaska is a very aggressive fighter, using his unorthodox striking primarily. Out of a 34-1 record, only one of those fights went to a decision, and that happened less than 8 years ago. Having only 5 fights in the UFC up to this point, Yuri has proved to be one of the best fighters in the UFC, finishing guys like Glover Teixeira, Volkan Ozdemir, and Alexander Rocky. But he's going against one of the scariest guys to ever fight in the UFC, in Alex Pajeda. Pajeda rose to stardom due to his rivalry with Israel Adesanya, beating him twice in kickboxing and once in the UFC. Then, after losing his middleweight belt, he made his quest to the light heavyweight right after, being the fastest fighter to ever win two belts in the UFC. Even UFC GOAT Daniel Cormier said that Alex Pajeda was something that has never been seen before. What would you do to Alex Pereira? Go ahead. He beat me, bro. Shut up. What do you mean? No, what do you mean? No. Stop. I would lose that leg for her. He would knock me out. That's what you're saying. Yeah. What makes him so special? His incredible kickboxing and deadly left hook. He throws lots of kicks, both low and high, and uses those kicks to set up his hands. Every single one of Alex's opponents know about the left hook. They know that that will be the shot that puts them to sleep. But still, Pajeda finds a way to land it, knocking them out as soon as his left hand makes contact. As for how this fight plays out, unless Yuri Prohaska plans on utilizing his grappling, which I don't think he will, then this fight plays out exactly the same as the first time they faced off, because there's nobody who can stand with Pajeda. I got Alex by knockout. Although it wasn't the fights we were expecting a week ago, we got a banger fight card coming this weekend. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.